Alrighty, everybody. Steve here from The Varied Life, and we're going to talk about some health and fitness stuff. And I need to make a confession because I am... I, I'm correcting myself because I have fallen into the exact same category that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, if you look down at the title, it says, Don't Limit Your Gains Because of the Rules of Thumb for Hypertrophy and Strength. And yeah, there's, there's some interesting information that comes out. Uh, when it comes to health and fitness, and I'm kind of looking at this from a perspective of my background of getting involved in health and fitness early on, uh, of course, in high school, played soccer, played lacrosse, uh, you know, got involved in martial arts and some other sports. Joined the Army when I was 17, did physical fitness back then, and then became a physical fitness instructor, or actually a remedial physical fitness instructor for those people that couldn't pass the Army height and weight and, you know, couldn't do the PT test. And so I had additional classes on exercise and nutrition. Now, a lot has changed over the years, the decades. And now I'm 58 years old. With that, I've continued to study and look at, at meta-analysis and studies on nutrition and exercise for hypertrophy and strength training and so on and so forth, using a variety of different things, body weights, bands, weights, machines, you know, that whole debacle of, you know, weight, free weights are better and no machines are better. Uh, I went through that whole route and really tested what I thought was true, those rules of thumb that we all have in our back pocket that from days gone by, which, by the way, many of those are not set in stone. And that's what this video is about. So I want to give you an idea of what's going on here. So here we see an example of this. And here's an example of the ideal number of sets and reps for muscle endurance, muscle size, and muscle strength. So hypertrophy, strength, and endurance. We're not going to talk so much about muscle endurance because once we talk about hypertrophy and strength and some of the things that studies have concluded in meta-analysis, <clears throat> yeah, you'll kind of look at the muscular endurance and say, yeah, the this is, that kind of blows that rule of thumb out of the water. And the whole idea of this is don't get so dogmatic about the rules of thumb, about these things right here. And I should say that I have recommended these things as well. For muscular size, 6 to 12 repetitions, 3 to 5 sets per body part, you know, rest about a minute to two minutes. Um, I, I totally on board with that. But... There comes a time of when you see studies that have been done that break these rules of thumb and break these barriers where it says, you know, hey, only 6 to 12 repetitions is going to, if you go outside that range of repetitions, you're not going to get muscular size. And studies have shown that this is not, a, not the case. We can actually get into higher, very higher rep ranges, you know, of, you know, 15, 20, 30 reps will give you good hypertrophy, that you can still do the same number of sets. We also see that there are studies that have been done that show instead of three to five sets, you can do even more and it produces great when it comes to hypertrophy. Uh, strength one to five set or reps per set with four to six sets, uh, rest period of three to five minutes in between, that's pretty good. Uh, but you will also see that there are some studies that go outside those boundaries. And uh, we need to be careful of this because, you know, if you are stalling in, like, say, hypertrophy and you're doing, you know, three to five sets, you're doing six to 12 reps and you've kind of plateaued, you know, it depends. If you're doing heavy weights, then maybe it's time for a change to do lighter weights, say 70% of your one rep max, and then do higher repetitions, 20, 25, and 30 repetitions, which studies have shown can produce good results for hypertrophy. So, and then combine that with working different angles of the muscle group, you might want to switch that up. So there's a number of things that we can do to get the hypertrophy we want if we've plateaued through other venues. So don't, don't have the blinders on thinking that, you know, you can't do any more than three to five sets, that you can't do any more of six to 12 repetitions. And that's what we're going to talk about and look at today. Uh, again, are we limited in this? Absolutely not. Now, there's a study, a uh, total number of sets as training volume quantification method for muscle hypertrophy. 
a systematic review by Baz Valley and a bunch of other guys. And that study concluded the results of this review suggest that counting the total number of sets to or near or close to failure per muscle group can be an optimal strategy to quantify training volume in experienced athletes aiming at hypertrophy. More specifically, a total number of sets can be used when the repetition range lies between 6 and 20. So, wait a second now, 6 and 20, well that, you get up, you know, muscular endurance is 12 to 20 reps, so now are we ruining, are we stomping on to muscular endurance, are we breaking these rules, is it heresy, is it blasphemy to the gym gods, absolutely not. What we're doing is looking at what works, and the studies and meta-analyses meta-analyses that have been done to quantify these things through MRIs, through DEXA scans, through muscle biopsies, through strength uh, training testing and one rep max and so on and so forth. All of these th things have been done with control groups. So it is very valid data. So these rules of thumb, if you think, you know, well, if I do, you know, 20 repetitions per set, that's going to give me more endurance than muscular size, so I'm not going to do that because my goal is hypertrophy. Don't think that way um, because there are studies that show that, you know, that's not the case. There's a rep range can be between 6 and 20 plus. And actually, there are some other studies that show that if you go 25 and 30 uh, repetitions, depending on the percentage of the one rep max and depending on the amount of rest periods between those sets, you can get some damn good hypertrophy gains. And again, you're not limited to just heavy weights with low repetitions, you know, six being low and, and then 12 repetitions out. So, so you can do higher number of repetitions with a lower percentage of weight and you can still get good gains. So again, it's six of one and a half dozen of the other. But for some reason, we originally came to this place where these, these rules of thumb of three to five sets for hypertrophy, six to 12 reps per set uh, is, is the best range for hypertrophy, which it is a good range to start in, but don't feel that you're limited in this. And that's the whole purpose of this video. Uh, so anyway, it ends up also the idea of three to five sets per body part for hypertrophy is best for hypertrophy. That needs updating as well. And this was shown in a study by Ray Adeli in 2015, had participants perform one, three, and five sets per exercise with two exercises for the biceps, three for the triceps in a three per week full body training program. So the biceps, so for the biceps, the set volumes per week were six, 18, and 30. Now it used to be back in the day that you would only do 10 or 12 sets per body part. Now they're doing six, 18, and 30. For the triceps, there was 9, 27, and 45 sets. All sets were performed to failure, and the study lasted six months. So this has some good data, and it lasted for a good amount of time. And it goes on to say that with the exception of the bench press, the results of all measures showed a more is better dose response all the way up to the super high volumes. Uh, there was more tricep thickness gains from the group performing 45 sets of triceps work per week. They didn't even appear to be a diminishing returns for that muscle growth. So again, should we limit ourselves to things like this over here saying, you know, for muscle size, you should only do three to five sets uh, per muscle group. No, that's absolutely not true. Are we limited to six to 12 repetitions for hypertrophy? No, that's not true as well. What we see is more is better and especially when we look at volume, volume is a, is a huge thing, and then working to failure. So working to failure or close to failure is key, and that seems to be the one thread of continuity through all of these studies for strength and hypertrophy training is training towards failure and an increase in volume. With an increase of volume, your body's going to respond more because of that increased volume, so you're going to get more micro muscle tears, you're going to get more repair and more muscle building in that MPS process. So yeah, very, very interesting. In another study by Schoenfeld back in 2018, uh, found that strength trained men who performed one, three or five sets per exercise during an eight week study. This led to a total weekly number of sets per muscle group of six, nine, uh, six and nine sets for the one set group 
18 to 27 sets for the three set group and 30 and 45 sets for the five set group in the upper and lower limbs respectively. So training volume was 50% higher for the quads than for the triceps and biceps. All sets were performed to failure. And do you want to know what the results were? There was a clear dose response of training volume with higher volumes resulted in markedly, markedly greater muscle growth. So again, uh, it's really interesting on what we see in regards to things like this, these rules of thumb and this online fitness coach.com. I'm not affiliated with that person in any way, shape, or form. And I've actually given similar advice to this, almost, almost 100% the same, because that's what previous studies had showed as a rep range of a good place to start out. But the one thing that I found is people get dogmatic and they say that, well, uh, you know, I've had people come up to me and when they're asking about, you know, well, why are you doing, you know, 20, 25 and 30 repetitions? You're, what you're doing is endurance training and it's not. <laughs> and then we have the discussion and I, I tell them about the studies that have been done and, uh, you know, it, all of them are like, really? Wow. I always thought it was just, you know, uh, six to 12 repetitions for hypertrophy. And I didn't know that you could go higher in repetitions. And I couldn't, I didn't know that you could do lower weight, you know, operating at about 70% of your one rep max and do such high repetitions and get good muscular, muscular uh, hypertrophy. And it actually is. So again, we're breaking these paradigms that we once had that limit our growth in hypertrophy. And the same goes for strength as well. Uh, let's see another one. <clears throat> uh, uh, what did we just finish up with? As far as rest time between sets, sets, the studies show that with more sets or higher reps, it's beneficial to have longer rest times so of anywhere from two to five minutes. In the study... Uh, Longer interset rest periods enhance muscular strength and hypertrophy and resistance trained men by Schoenfeld and a number of other people. It concluded that this study provides evidence that longer rest periods promote greater increase in muscular strength and hypertrophy in young resistance trained men with three minute times. So don't feel that if you, you know, like according to this chart here, that if you rest, you know, one to two minutes and you rest longer than that two minutes that you're going to lose all your, your muscular gains or you're going to negatively affect them in some way, shape or form. Studies show that that is not the case. You know, you can do, I've even seen a study where it talked about where you're getting into those 20, 25 and 30 repetitions and doing, you know, multiple sets of that body part. Longer rest periods is actually good. And that, you know, three and five minutes, is can actually be good because again you're doing the overall volume and you're still going close to failure to failure or close to failure so really the rest periods allow your cns to recover and you're able to overcome the fatigue that immediate fatigue and especially as new lifters you might need more time between sets to be able to get a more effective workout so again, these rules of thumb are rules of thumb and everybody's thumb, most people have thumbs, but they're different sizes and shapes and thickness and go to a proctologist and you'll, you'll understand how important that is uh, when you're looking for a proctologist. But with that being said, yeah, these, these things of these rules of thumb are general principles that we can follow but again, don't be dogmatic and don't think that these things are set in stone to the point of where, you know, you see somebody like the guy that saw me doing 25 and 30 repetitions with skull crushers. And he's like, yeah, you're, you know, why are you doing that? And I told him, I said, well, I'm, I'm working on hypertrophy. I'm trying to gain more size. I'm trying to get more uh, constant tension on the muscle by keeping the arm back and then keeping constant tension, tension with the elbows in and so on and so forth and working to failure with 70% of my one rep max. And he goes, no, you're, what you're doing is actually endurance training. And it's like, mm, no, it's not. And again, it's people go with what they know. And that seems to be the problem is that they, and, and I have to confess that I have done that myself. So with that being said, uh, all of these things that we see, 
let me get rid of this picture here. Uh, all of these things that we see when it comes to strength and hypertrophy gains, don't think that you're limited and that if you're going to do strength gains, uh, like what was it? The strength gains uh, is one to five reps per set, four to six sets, rest three to five minutes between sets. Um, yeah, I've actually gotten some real good strength gains, matter of fact, with doing uh, six to 12 repetitions with three to five sets. And let me see if I can pull up that video because that's exclusively what I've used. Uh, dun, 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 and yeah, that's it right there. So let's take a look at this and I want to show you this. Uh, choose file, file, desktop, and we want 500. Seriously? Let's try this. Maybe we could just... All right. We've got that. The same thing on the other side, 25 and 45. So that's 500. So we're pushing for 500. There's going to be a new PR on the hammer strength wide grip press. So we'll see, see what we can do. We're, we're doing a big jump here. So let's see, see what we can get. today. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, I had been exclusively doing six to 12 repetitions on my hypertrophy training. And what I ended up doing is just adding more weight. Of course, progressive overload is also a thing that you need to take into consideration whether you're doing hypertrophy or strength training. But with this, I was doing hypertrophy, going for hypertrophy, getting bigger. But as I kept going up in weight, it was like, well, I'm just going to keep going up. I'm, I'm going to keep that progressive, uh, uh, what is it? I just said it, progressive overload and adding weight over time to put more stress and muscular and tension on the muscles that I had. And eventually I was able to get up to the hammer strength and that wide grip bench to be able to do 500 pounds for three repetitions. That's probably the max of where I'm ever going to go with that because, uh, yeah, you could feel some stuff in the shoulder and it's, it wasn't an injury, but it was just kind of like the shoulders like, hey, relax. <laughs> yes, I know the muscles can do this, but relax, please, just a little bit. Okay. Uh, but the good thing is, is that, yeah, you can experience some good strength gains doing three to five sets per body part, doing that six to 12 repetitions. And what I ended up doing is I do six repetitions close or to failure on the first set. And then on the next set, I would do, you know, eight, 10, 12, and uh, follow those. And each of those would be to failure as well. And then over a period of time, I'd increase the, increase the weight for that progressive overload. And then it just kept going up and up. And then eventually it got to the place of where you know, even though I only did three repetitions on this, I would do 400. Uh, let me see. What was the uh, what was the one where I ended up doing 410 pounds? That was 410. I can't remember how many reps I did on this. So 
So, yeah, it ends up, uh, things like that, even working within that rep range of 6 to 12 repetitions, I was able to get 410 pounds on there. So, yeah, don't think or don't limit yourself, I should say, by looking at that little little chart that says, you know, the ideal number of sets and reps for muscular endurance, muscular size, or strength, uh, that you can't go outside of the bounds of those. So for exactly, for muscular strength, there's one to five sets with four to six sets, or one to five repetitions for four to six sets for muscular strength. Um, yeah, I kind of blew that out of the water because I was doing three to five sets and I was doing six to 12 repetitions as my normal routine. And I just keep kept doing the progressive overload and adding more and more weight. And then I got the, the those strength gains as well. So yeah, it's, it's a good rule of thumb to kind of get you in the ballpark. So if you're new to health and fitness and exercise, um, but don't get bent out of shape or don't let people be dogmatic and think that you cannot get muscular strength by doing more sets or less sets with higher reps or, you know, 20 to 30 repetitions. Oh, you've gone into the endurance phase and endurance training. So you're not going to get, you're going to minimize your, your hypertrophy and strength gains. That's not actually true from what we see from studies. So with that being said, yeah, there's a lot of information online. And like I said, stuff like that of doing these rules of thumb, you know, three to five sets, six to 12 repetitions is what I recommend for new people. And rest periods of, you know, one minute, one to two minutes is good. Some studies show three to five minutes. It, it depends on the experience of the lifter. If you're new to lifting, longer rest periods are not going to kill your gains. If you just hit the same volume, as long as you hit your volume goals, you're going to be good to go. And it can actually be more beneficial because you're going to have more gas in the tank to do more follow-up sets. But if you're new just into the gym, I don't recommend operating at such a high percentage of one rep max because that's going into an area of where there's more possibilities and chances statistically of getting injuries, muscle strains, muscle tears, things like that. Uh, you know, messing up your shoulder and so on and so forth. Uh, and especially since you can see with hypertrophy gains can be made with lower percentage, like 70% of your one rep max, 80% of your one rep max. There's no reason to go so hard and to put so much wear and tear on your body if you can get the same results. Again, think of it like an exam. If you're studying for an exam at school and you study for an hour and you're going to get a passing grade, you know, you get that, that 80 or 90% passing grade, why would you spend five or six hours to get the same grade? It doesn't make sense. Again, we're looking at effectiveness and efficiency when it comes to training. And sometimes we need to flip the script to get past plateaus when it comes to strength and hypertrophy training. So for somebody that says, you know, oh, you can only get strength by doing a uh, high weight and low repetitions, that's not necessarily true because studies have showed that you can actually do low weight and high repetitions and still get some strength gains with that. As far as muscular size, you can do multiple sets, you know, 15, 27, 40 sets per muscle group uh, shows that you can build hypertrophy, build muscle size, and it's not considered junk volume. And again, there's some other uh, variables involved, such as nutrition, recovery, and, and how you organize your routine, and so on and so forth. But yeah, don't think that the rules of thumb, if you go outside the boundaries of these rules, that you're going to lose your strength gains, or your strength in hypertrophy is going to diminish and go away because you went into the, the endurance you know, range of repetitions. Uh, that's just not the case. Again, we need to look at volume. We need to look at muscular tension. We need to look at uh, training to failure, progressive overload. All those things are going to come into play. And of course, the huge hinge pin on this is going to be your nutrition. Uh, the majority of people that want to get big, I've, I've run into a lot of people that want to get big and build muscle and they go to the gym religiously and they've got a good routine but their nutrition isn't there. 
And unfortunately, it gets to a place of people have asked me, like I just had a guy the other day ask me in the gym, and he says, hey, um, you know, he asked me about some exercise, and then he asked me about nutrition. And I said, well, you know, he's having problems getting big. And I said, well, how many calories are you eating a day? And this guy was about five foot nine, and it's clear he was not eating enough. He wasn't eating enough calories. He definitely wasn't eating enough protein. So you can work your ass off in the gym, and you can have the, the, the most optimal rest times between sets. You can use the techniques and the strategies and pause reps and long length partials and so on and so forth. But if you don't have the bricks to build the house, the house isn't going to get built. You know, you're going to have the mortar, you're going to have some boards, but you're not going to have those protein. You're not going to have the bricks that make up the majority of that muscle. And that's what it comes down to. So a lot of people that I've run into that can't get big, their number one problem is nutrition, or I should say the lack of nutrition, the lack of increased protein intake, which studies have shown to be 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of body weight that you want to be. With that is is a definitely good rule of thumb that has been tested. And I forget the name of the study, but it's a general thing. But again, as with all studies, you know, some people go higher and they'll go one and a half grams per pound uh, body weight, you know, for the protein. And that works out well for them. Some people, it's just, it's not necessary. So they do better at one gram or 0.8 or 0.7 or whatever. But uh, yeah, you need to find your sweet spot, but at least that range will get you with on the board. The same with those rule of thumbs. But don't think that operating outside of these rules of thumb will diminish your returns because there are studies showing that that is not the case. So again, yeah, a lot of stuff comes out and a lot of this information has been out for quite a while. Like for example, you know, some of these studies have been done in the early 2000s or mid 2000s or 2015, uh, 2018 and so on and so forth. Some, some older, uh, early 2000s. So, you know, all this stuff has been there but unfortunately, a lot of fitness influencers, and myself included, I don't think I'm a fitness influencer because I'm not getting paid. You know, I don't charge people for money for this information. I just share this information. But people don't go back and continue the research and continue the education for strength, hypertrophy, and so on and so forth. And so they get locked into this mentality of these are the rules and this is the only thing and this is what I sell and this what works for me. Well, if it works for you, there's a possibility that there's other things that work as well. So again, if we put blinders on and we say, okay, we're all, I'm only operating off of my personal experience, we're limiting how much we can gain in hypertrophy and strength. And we're definitely li limiting our clients by putting ourselves into a box and not going outside of the box. Sometimes you need to think outside the box and when in actuality, the box is much bigger than what we think. So anyway, yeah, I, I wanted to give this information and pass this along. Again, I'm not affiliated with that, you know, what was it? Let me see. Uh, Onlinefitnesscoach.com. I'm not affiliated with that person because they threw this up here. And actually, I did this response, of course, typed it all out. Uh, in response to that person. And then the cool thing was there was other people that posted studies that say, yeah, that's not necessarily true. Not that that's bad information. It's good general basic information, but don't get so dogmatic that you rant and rave and you call other people names. I'm not saying this person did, but I have run into other people that will say, no, if you do 20, 30 uh, repetitions, you're, it's all just muscular endurance and you're not going to get any hypertrophy. That's where I share the information and show, no, there, there is, you know, when they do MRIs, when they do DEXA scans, when they do uh, measurements, and when they do muscle biopsies with definitive proof of showing that these have a good increase on hypertrophy and then, of course, the strength testing and you have control groups and so on and so forth, pretty controlled studies, the evidence is clear that those rules of thumb that we thought were so set in stone are pretty malleable. And there are some other thumbs out there that we can bring into our wheelhouse, some other tools that we can do to get past those plateaus uh, that we might be plagued with. And yeah, I found that out on my own by looking through these studies and meta-analyses. 
So with that being said, uh, that's the health and fitness thing for today. So if you are plateauing in an area and you, you're looking for hypertrophy, you're looking for strength or whatever it is, look up studies on this information and realize that there are things out there that you can do that might be able to get you out of those plateaus. Uh, the last little thing that I want to talk about is that I had been going for hypertrophy, but I hit plateaus and I was just banging my head against the wall. And then finally I saw some information showing that increased volume can result in more hypertrophy. And so, so I started adding more volume and I started doing more for my chest because I didn't have an upper chest. And now I've got, you know, I've got some muscle up there. It took a year to do it. But with that increased volume, boom, that showed me. And of course, with increased volume, that means I need to do more sets per body part. So that kind of blew that rule of thumb out of the water and saying, oh, okay, now I can use this to my advantage. Now it makes sense. Now I, I have a better understanding of volume and I have a better understanding of recovery and nutrition and so on and so forth by continuing the education. And of course, sharing it all with you. So uh, what dogmatic stuff have you heard that people are so dogmatic, they're so, they got those blinders on that they just don't want to look at anything else uh, when the opposite is true? I mean, put that in the comment section down below. And again, the last disclaimer, I'm not saying that those rules of thumb are bad. They will get you on the map. It's better. It will get you on the board. Kind of like throwing darts at a dartboard. It will get you on the board than just kind of making up your own shit, okay? It gets you on the board and you can get some really great gains. But if you're looking to go further than the average person, then start looking at some of these studies and these meta-analysis to get you to the point where you can meet those goals. And sometimes you have to think outside of those rules of thumb and include other thumbs in your consideration. Okay. So that's going to be it for today. Thanks. Uh, consider to like and subscribe to the channel and we will see you on the next video. Peace. Good stuff.